All right, carboxylic acid derivatives. So we learned a little bit about the reactions of our carboxylic acids in terms of how to prepare them and how to reduce them. Um, the carboxylic acid derivatives are where we're going to spend uh, the rest of our time when we're looking at the acid halide, also called the acyl chloride to be more specific. The acid anhydride, which is this oxygen sandwiched in between two carbonyl groups, the ester, and the amid. Um, any compound where carbon has three bonds to electronegative atoms, chlorines, oxygens, nitrogens, um, things more electronegative than carbon themselves, is called a carboxylic acid derivative. So even a nitrile is technically a carboxylic acid derivative. It's a carbon with three bonds to a nitrogen, which is more electronegative. So therefore it is a carboxylic acid derivative, which means that it reacts very similarly to the carboxylic acid. We do have some varying uh, reactivity though. Acid halides and acid anhydrides are relatively unstable. They are more reactive than carboxylic acids. Esters and amides are more abundant in nature and more stable. Um, these are uh, less likely to react um, than the acid halides or the anhydrides. So we do have a wide variety of types of reactivity and we'll see a nice flow chart diagram that I've created um, to help us understand this reactivity. Um, a lot of uh, many esters have a very pungent odor. Um, some of them smell nice, some of them do not. So these are the ones that smell nice. Um, banana oil, isopentyl acetate, um, is very, very strong, but it smells very similar to, um, I wouldn't say maybe natural banana, but definitely banana, synthetic banana. Um, same with uh, methyl butanoate and butyl acetate. Naming, not as important. Um, we're going to talk about reactivity instead. Proteins are just amide bonds, right? Um, if you ever called it a peptide bond, you're probably a biologist. If you are, call it an amide bond, you are an organic chemist. So the repeating amide linkages here um, create the structure of proteins, right? Amino acids are amides. Uh, once, or the uh, amino acids are uh, carboxylic acids and amines, and when they react, the nitrogen moiety uh, reacts with the carbon of the carboxylic acid moiety, they make an amide. And that amide bond is something that we're actually going to be able to do at the end of this chapter. Um, many other compounds feature amides, uh, some just natural sedatives like melatonin, which helps you sleep and all sorts of stuff. All right, so moving on to reactivity. When we think about carboxylic acid derivatives, they are electrophilic at the same exact carbon of the carbonyl, same carbon of the carbonyl we've been dealing with before, right? Because of the polarity. Now this is also a polar bond, right? So we're seeing uh, induction and polarity at two different positions uh, attached to the carbon electrophile. So reactivity uh, on this list um, is really determined by induction, resonance, sterics, and just quality of the leaving group. Leaving groups here are highlighted in red, and those leaving groups are, are the thing that we are going to be um, really isolating ourselves from. We're gonna start with the ACO chlorides and we'll see all of the reactions that those can do. Then we'll go to the acid anhydrides and then the esters and then the amides. Um, so looking at this list, most reactive at the top, um, biggest reason is for the idea that the chlorine is very electronegative. It is a very good leaving group. I just kind of want to draw the leaving groups that we're talking about. When uh, that chlorine leaves, it leaves a Cl minus. That is a very stable anion for reasons that we know from before, like REO from way back in chapter three. Uh, when the acid anhydride gets attacked and substituted, the leaving group is a carboxylate ion. And we know that is stabilized by resonance. When the ester gets attacked, 
the leading group is an ox. When the ester gets attacked, the leading group is an oxygen with a minus charge. Can also be um, mitigated in just a second because I know that already might start worrying people. Wait, oxygen as a leaving group uh, with no resonance. What, Lauren? Yeah, I know. This is why we're decreasing reactivity as we go down this list. Nitrogen with a minus charge, super reactive, right? These are less stable. So we will start to see how these, when we get down to uh, their substitution reactions, those uh, are not going to leave as bases. They're more acidic solutions. And because of the quality of the leaving group as a base, we actually have to mitigate that by using a slightly more acidic solution than the uh, first two, very stable up here. All right, so the more stable the leaving group, the more reactive the original reactant, right? So acyl chlorides are the most reactive derivatives, um, primarily induction, right? The electronegative uh, chlorine enhances the electrophilic character of the carbonyl. Chlorine atom does not donate much electron density to the carbonyl. Um, it does have the ability to resonate. We've talked about chlorine and other halogens um, in our aromatic chapter as, um, as an actual a uh, donator of resonance, um, they're not great. They don't like to donate electron density through resonance, but they physically can, okay? So the major reason why chlorine is the most reactive here out of the groups is primarily because the leaving group is the best and induction occurs. Uh, amides are the least reactive derivative because uh, induction, the nitrogen atom is less an electronegative than carbon or oxygen. So it's the least amount uh, of induction. Uh, resonance with the nitrogen contributes a significant amount of electron density to the carbonyl. So because nitrogen likes to donate electron density and hold a positive charge. Uh, this final structure here in the resonance is a significant contributor, which means that the carbon of the carbonyl is less electrophilic. Aldehydes and ketones are also electrophilic, but they do not undergo substitution, right? We saw how these groups can be added to, right? We can add to the carbon oxygen double bond in uh, aldehydes and ketones. However, now we have uh, leaving groups in our carboxylic acids um, and their derivatives. So they can actually undergo what we call nucleophilic acyl substitution. Acyl is a common name for the carbonyl group. So we can see how whatever, we're abbreviated Z, whatever the leaving group is. That could be the chlorine, it could be the uh, oxygen of the ester, it can be the oxygen of the anhydride or the nitrogen of the amid. All of those can undergo a substitution reaction instead of just an addition. Overall, the reactions have very similar mechanisms, right? We're gonna have a general mechanism that has two core steps. Uh, the two core steps will be a nucleophilic attack which means whatever nucleophile is over the reaction arrow, it will attack the carbon of the carbonyl, kicking up the pi bond. We do not do an SN2 reaction or an SN1 reaction. Those are on um, sp3 hybridized carbons. Here, our electrophile is sp2 hybridized, right? Trigonal planar. What does form is that carbon of the electrophile uh, after the first step forms a tetrahedral intermediate. And then the lone pairs from the oxygen can drop back down, which will kick out the leaving group. Uh, if the reaction occurs, it will kick out the original uh, Z atom, right? The nucleophile will be more stable to stay on and it will kick out Z. And Z minus, right, the loss of the leaving group, um, has to be stable as well, right? So we need a leaving group that is stable. Excellent. And we'll make that new bond. It was carbon to Z, and now it's carbon to whatever nucleophile we use. 
Um, H minus and C minus were never kicked out in the previous chapter, which is why um, now we are going to see that carboxylic acids and their derivatives have a much different mechanistic approach. All right, proton transfers um, can occur in these reactions, primarily when we talk about um, the less reactive uh, carbonyl carboxylic acid derivatives. Um, and so we'll start with basic conditions, but once we start moving into the esters and the amides, um, we'll start to see that proton transfers might be peppered in. Now, up to three proton transfers may be necessary in our mechanism. So whether the conditions are acidic, neutral, or basic, you will have to decide whether the proton transfer happens first or not. So let's talk about reactions of acyl chlorides. There's a lot of them here. The first one is going to be an acyl chloride becoming an acid anhydride. Now, what we'll see is the acyl chloride can go to make any of our other derivatives very easily just by sprinkling in an acyl chloride with an acetate ion or a carboxylate ion, we will get a nucleophilic attack. We form the tetrahedral intermediate. And then when that oxygen rolls its electrons back down and kicks out the chlorine, Chlorine is the most stable leaving group. Chlorine is more stable than our nucleophile leaving. I'll draw Cl minus just so that we know it's the leaving group and it's more stable. And that's it, right? It's going to be uh, forming the acid anhydride by reacting an acyl chloride with uh, our carboxylate ion. Second reaction. ACO chloride to a carboxylic acid. What we need for this reaction, which I'm going to use the exact same ACO chloride, is water and pyridine. Pyridine is a base. It's a aromatic compound that's very stable. Nitrogen lone pair right here is not aromatic. That is going to be basic, right? So we'll see that that uh, reaction will be done in a basic solution, okay? So first step, oxygen in water attacks the carbon of the carbonyl, makes the tetrahedral intermediate, And then a proton transfer is necessary. Water is still a great leaving group compared to Cl minus. So we want to prevent HCl from forming and we want to prevent any water from getting kicked off. And so we will deprotonate that oxygen so that it's not a good leaving group anymore. And then the oxygen will reform a carbonyl, kicking out the Cl minus. So the exchange here is going to involve one proton transfer. And that proton transfer will be between pyridine and the protonated alcohol. You can do this reaction, same exact one, to make an ester. Acyl chlorides can go to make esters. The only difference here with this reaction is instead of water, you will use an alcohol. Any old alcohol that you want with purity. Sometimes pyridine is abbreviated PYR under the reaction arrow. Just be aware that means pyridine 
it means you're in a basic solution. Mechanism is the exact same. So take a minute to go over it or look at it in the textbook. Okay, same exact mechanism though. The only difference is instead of H2O and deprotonating the H2O, you're deprotonating the protonated alcohol. Last one. Acyl chlorides. Two and a mid. Now what's great about an amine is that an amine itself is a base. So you can see any sort of amine here as long as it is ammonia, a primary amine, or a secondary amine. You cannot use a tertiary amine because a tertiary amine does not have a proton and you do need to be able to deprotonate this nitrogen. Let's go ahead and see why. Nitrogen will attack the carbon of the carbonyl, making the tetrahedral intermediate. Hang off those three hydrogens. Nitrogen gets a proton protonated charge plus one. A second equivalent NH3, just like the nitrogen of the pyridine was used to deprotonate the nucleophile. Same idea here. Then our tetrahedral intermediate can collapse back down and kick out the good leaving group, Cl minus. And we do make NH four plus one. Typically we see that these two come together to precipitate out to form a salt, or at least can be isolated in an aqueous solution of a salt. All right, lots of different variations, right? The only ones that uh, we will go over in class are using lithium aluminum hydride. Um, that is going to do a substitution reaction, just so, as we saw um, before. Um, and then looking at uh, lithium aluminum derivatives, we'll do this in class where we can stop midway. All right.